Hello, my name is Rob Mitchell and welcome to Electronics for Makers. In this new series of videos, it's called Fun with Facts and every video we look at a fact that I find interesting. Very narcissistic, let's find out what's going on in this video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at capacitive coupling and why I think it's pretty neat, or when I first discovered about it, I thought it was pretty cool. And it tends to surround about the fact that you can get negative voltages from only a positive voltage. So let's see how it works. So if we go ahead and draw a capacitor in its most basic form, we have two plates like that and a dielectric in the middle. Sometimes it's an air gap. It can be filled with an inert material. Sometimes it can be an electrolyte. You get some pretty cool different designs but this is a capacitor. Now, the one thing that's really cool about a capacitor is that it likes to maintain the same voltage across it whenever it can. Now, there are gonna be some engineers screaming out there because they're probably gonna talk about energy and stuff like that. I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in the practical side and a simple explanation. So, if we start by saying this side has zero volts, this side over here has zero volts, the potential difference between the two would be that minus that, which would be zero volts. So let's call this side a V1, and let's call this side V2. So overall, what we find is that the voltage across the capac uh, capacitor, sorry, let's call it V cap, equals V1 minus V2. Now, this is where it gets really, really cool. The capacitor always wants to try and maintain the same value for that. So. For example, if we draw another capacitor down here, and let's say this typically has zero volts, and this also typically has zero volts, but then we step it up to 10 volts, right? The other side also goes up to 10 volts because it always wants to maintain V cap. So normally it'd be zero minus zero, so it'd be zero. Then this goes up to 10. So V cap is now 10 and it goes, well, that wasn't what it was before. It wants to try and maintain V cap at zero. So this side jumps up as well to 10 volts. So therefore the, uh, the difference becomes 10 minus 10 becomes zero. Now this is where it gets really cool. If you now take this new scenario right here, like so, and we say 10 volts, 10 volts, okay. The difference between those two is zero volts. But what happens if we bring now this 10 volts to zero volts really quickly? Well, if we bring this down to 10 volts, then this side becomes zero volts, okay? And V cap is now zero minus 10, which is minus 10 volts. So therefore it will bring this one down to zero volts as well to maintain the same voltage across it of zero volts. So that goes to zero volts. So as we can see, this is capacity coupling, but there's a really neat trick which makes I, which I find makes this fact very interesting. Now, this makes sense so far, and this is basically what capacitive coupling is, but there's a really cool uh, hidden feature here that you can exploit to make negative voltages. Now, if we take a capacitor in that situation, and we go, yes, like that, and we connect one side with a diode, to ground, okay? And we go, right, normally they're both zero volts. By the way, we're just gonna assume that a diode is uh, fully conducting in that way, regardless of the 0.6 volt drop. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna assume it's like an ideal diode. So we both start with them being zero volts, and then we go, whoops, a daisy, to 10 volts. Now he also, due to capacitive coupling, wants to go to 10 volts, but he can't, because the diode will get rid of the voltage. So he stays, at zero volts. And if we keep this stable, eventually the capacitor is going to like the fact that there's 10 volts across him. And he'll always try to maintain 10 volts. Now, if we suddenly now bring this side all the way back down to zero volts, he wants to maintain a 10 volt difference, but he's at zero volts. 
So it becomes zero minus 10. The answer, you get minus 10 volts. And this is how a circuit can be used to generate negative voltages, such as the negative voltage generator uh, from Mitch Electronics, as you can see um, in the link below. And despite the fact that all of this can run from a single power supply, where there's no negative voltage, you can generate a negative voltage by exploiting the fact that capacitors always like to keep the voltage across them as constant as possible. And I find that to be a fun fact. So that's all we have time for today for capacitive coupling and fun with facts. Thank you for watching and see you next time.